San Antonio came together for this woman. She lost the electricity at her home after a fire, but tonight she finally has a warm place to stay. Thank you for goodness sake. Thank you very much. It's a blessing for me and a blessing to, for everyone. And I appreciate it with all my heart. How she managed to survive the cold nights this week and the plan that came together to get both she and her cats into a safe space. But first. You know, the extreme temperatures are leading to power problems and potentially deadly situations. Bear County deputies confirmed that one person was found dead outside of a tent near I-10 and FM 1518. Yeah, investigators say it's potentially due to the cold weather. Outreach teams have been trying to get the unsheltered indoors. The city of San Antonio tracking how many people are in temporary day shelters and temporary overnight shelters. On Monday, 288 people stayed in a temporary overnight shelter on Tuesday. That number increased to 364 people. The city also saw an increase in its temporary day shelter numbers. OK, so let's bring in meteorologist Adam Kasky. Adam, uh, many people are wondering when these conditions are expected to improve, i.e. get warmer. Uh, actually, through the night, it's only going to slowly get better. We still have the chill out there right now. And yes, it's cold, but bear in mind, we had even more extreme temperatures earlier this winter, just before Christmas we did. But it's still cold out there, and it's critical because now you know we have that precipitation and the icing, which we didn't have before up to 35 officially at the airport in San Antonio. That's uh, 410 and 281. Bulverde still at 32. Still a lot of ice weighing down the trees and power lines along and north of 1604, where we still have some freezing numbers. Bernie, 32. Comfort, 31. Bandera, Kerrville at 32. But check out Canyon Lake now, 34. I do think in the hours ahead, we will see those temperatures rise up just a little bit incrementally and even those incremental changes will be significant through the night. So it's not going to get worse tonight in terms of temperatures and additional icing around San Antonio will be OK. We're not going to add to any of the ice. There are a few pockets of the hill country over the next few hours where we could add to some of the icing. We'll get into that in a moment, but look at 6 a.m. Bernie, Bulverde, Timberwood Park, 33. Get past the morning drive. And we're in the mid 30s and then I don't know about you, but I've never been so excited to see 40 degrees until now. 47 the high tomorrow near 60 Friday. We're into the 60s on Saturday and this weekend up to 70. But this is what we're dealing with. This is Timberwood Park. Look at this massive oak tree. It failed under the weight of all that ice, especially the prolonged stress throughout the day, the afternoon and even now this evening to that ice that has yet to melt. Again, the melting's on the way, but it's going to be gradual tonight and even into tomorrow. Another batch of rain's moving in. We're going to take a look at where we could have some additional icing in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. Looking forward to the warmer temperatures and the sun returning. Mean, meanwhile, the cold weather, especially concerning for a woman we introduced you to last week and the people who are hoping to keep her safe. Mary Lou Sandoval has been without heat and electricity after a fire at her fourplex. You know, as if that wasn't bad enough, she, like all of us, has also been dealing with these extreme temperatures. But now, now she's in a warm hotel. The night team's John Paul Barajas explains how she got there. Mary Lou? Hi, Mary Lou. For the first time in two weeks, Mary Lou Sandoval has electricity and a warm place to stay. She was staying in her fire damaged fourplex just northwest of downtown, even as temperatures continue to drop. The olor was very hard, but I just had to pray and cry. I was wrapped up. Now the only thing I had to do when I get a chance was all my blankets. You know. Neighbors urged Mary Lou to leave the damage unit, but the challenge was securing a place for her lifetime of belongings and four cats that mean the world to her. How do you feel so when they can. told you that you could bring your they cats mean. with you? Oh, I was so happy. I said, thank you, Jesus. I was not going to play without my children. Valerie Salas with Christian Assistance Ministries tells us it took a village of people to get Mary Lou out of the dangerous conditions. Hypothermia can kick in. Um, she's an elderly woman. She was sleeping in that apartment in, in freezing temperatures. Even with my lights, my light on my phone and everything, it was pitch black in there. 
Salas explained Adult Protective Services is covering the cost of the extended stay hotel, Cameron did a storage unit, while volunteers from Paid Forward packed up and moved Mayor Lou's belongings to the safe space. I acquainted my guardian angels. You all my angels. Those guardian angels also stocked Mary Lou with plenty of food for her and her babies. A lot of goodies. I already see them. She's also grateful for the coffee machine to pair with her favorite snack. I know yeah. you like your coffee and your crackers, right? <laughs> I ain't the cracker lady. Valerie Salas with Christian Assistance Ministries tells us that Mary Lou will probably stay at the hotel for at least a few weeks to give the Alamo Area Council of Governments an opportunity to check out her apartment here, which has mostly been uh, tarpered up uh, to see if it's able to be repaired or if they'll have to get her a new place altogether. Jamal Barajas, KSA 12 News. And we will be following up with Mary What Lou. great news. Yes, yes, I love that. But that's San Antonio for you, right? People come together. All right, so the ice on power lines and trees kept CPS energy crews busy. At the peak, we saw 45,000 homes and businesses with no power. But at 5 o'clock this evening, that number had dropped to 2,000. Yeah, the work not over, but they are making progress. Tonight, crews are working to get the power back on for 6,300 homes and businesses, roughly 6,300, it says total customers affected, as you see right there on your screen. Now we continue our team coverage on the weather and its impacts tonight. Yeah, ice near Loop 1604 and farther up north really was the major concern. Our Lee Waldman saw the crews focusing on roadways near Loop 1604. Yeah, and our Patty Santos traveled further north to Spring Branch tonight where ice has led to power problems for some neighbors in Comal County. With the temperature still set to remain in the low 30s and ice this thick still around some power lines, the potential for more outages is still there. My neighbor next door has a lot of them that are hanging really low. So that's my concern now is that we're going to lose power. As crews work through the cold to restore power, some Hill Country residents remain worried. We have a lot of trees down. Um, on my street, we have an electrical line that's blocking the road right now. Others are preparing for the cold night ahead. We've been out since 6 a.m. and it's still out. So I'm, I'm going home to a cold house. Crews worked for hours on a big line break at 281 in Rebecca Creek. The road was closed off to traffic as linemen pulled the replacement cables across the highway. There's trees in the road as far as you can see. They're just breaking down. Pat Feely is getting a head start on what will be days of clearing off broken limbs around his business and his home, too. But the plumber says his real work starts tomorrow as frozen pipes begin to thaw out. We haven't been able to get to work for two days. So even if you do have breaks or things like that, most plumbers can't. It's not safe to be on the road. Hill Country residents hope to break free from their winter nightmare soon. Worse tonight and better tomorrow. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Relief just a few hours away weather-wise. While the ice on branch is not the only concern, though, Bear County crews continue to attack the ice on roadways as well. The night team's Lee Waldman got to ride along with crews from the Public Works Department off Judson Road and Loop 1604. There, that would be the switch turning it on. Hundreds of gallons. I think the uh, tanks hold around 500 gallons. Wow. Um, and we have about eight of them. Of beet juice and salt is loaded onto the backs of Bear County Public Works trucks to de-ice roads. It's been working out pretty great so far. So well, they haven't had to close any roads. Over the past 24 to 48 hours, crews sprayed about 1,200 gallons of this new solution. It spreads out more evenly where people actually drive to help keep the ice from building up in those areas. Aaron Martinez, the Public Works Superintendent, says they work closely with the Bear County Sheriff's Office in this effort. We have uh, about six to eight hot spots that the Sheriff has identified, but we've also identified some that we know that may ice up. So uh, in total, we probably have about 15 areas that we're going to um, spray today. Shut it off. It's not just the roads crews are responsible for. Today we actually had a, a tree down, so our guys went out and removed uh, the debris. Working tirelessly to make sure we are taken care of. The guys that are out there, the ones that are that actually are applying the de-icing, uh, the guys that are placing out the barricades, uh, they're the guys that really are the ones that kind of help uh, uh, to make, you know, uh, Bear County and constituents safe out there. 
They'll continue treating roads tonight and into the morning as long as those temperatures are staying low. If you need to report any debris in roads in unincorporated counties of Bear County and unincorporated areas, rather, just call your local service station. We have all of those numbers listed on KSAT.com. Reporting live, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Lee, thank you. So more schools are planning to open tomorrow. The closures help to keep more people off the roads, but there was yet another impact. Closed school campuses meant that blood drives had to be canceled. That's according to the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. The issues on the road also meant that it would be more difficult to get blood from other centers across the state and the country. And that's why the center is asking local donors, you, to step up and donate over these next few days. I would just encourage people once the weather is better, once they feel safe to get out there to please, please donate blood. It's just, um, unfortunately this happens, you know, once a year it seems like with the ice storms, but um, please um, donate blood. So here's the situation right now. Our area only has enough blood for two days. You can increase that supply if you just donate. We have a link for you to sign up on our website, ksat.com. Still ahead on the night beat, we're looking ahead to this year's party with a purpose. Do not miss. Please stick around for this for the big reveal for the new Fiesta poster. And more than a million dollars missing from an armored truck. Why police in Converse say the story of an armed robbery by that driver didn't make sense. That story and more next right here on the night. Beat. How does someone steal more than a million dollars from an armed truck, an armored truck? Well, police in Converse say that's what happened back in December, and they believe it was an inside job. The driver of the armored truck said he was held at gunpoint outside an auto zone and forced to drive to a nearby neighborhood where masked men stole a million dollars. Investigators say surveillance video, though, didn't add up. It contradicted his story. Converse police allege the driver, Brian Martinez Rodriguez, orchestrated the robbery with some help. We learned that a childhood friend of, of Brian's was actually involved as well. Both suspects face a first degree felony theft charge. Police say the robbery happened on what was Martinez Rodriguez's second to last day of employment with the armored truck company. He was going to be terminated on December 30th for failing to get his license to carry a firearm. The Fed raising interest rates for the eighth time in nearly a year. It's an increase of a quarter of a point, but some analysts believe this will be one of the last major hikes. Economist George, excuse me, Joe Brucellis says this week's move means the central bank is returning to a more traditional and gentler pace of increases. He says that's because we've already seen a slowdown in inflation in recent months. All right, we are counting down to Fiesta, baby. It is 78 days away, and tonight, the Fiesta Commission held an event to unveil that, the official poster of 2023. Local artist Kathleen Whittle designed it. Kathleen and her husband were stationed here days before Fiesta, and they felt so welcomed by the event that it inspired her to participate this year. The poster is filled with symbols of Texas, like the blue bonnet, of course, and it also features things specific to San Antonio, like the images of Rey Feo. Kathleen is hoping that her design captures the spirit of San Antonio. And by the way, during today's event, we also learned who, 20, who is uh, 2023 Miss Fiesta, and that is Jaslyn Ramirez. Congratulations to you, Jaslyn. Exciting. Yeah. Would you say 70 some days? 78. You know yes. what? I can't wait for Fiesta, but you know what's interesting about the evening? All day the temperature's been rising, even yes. when the sun went down. Yes, we're seeing improvements in that, and we're going to continue to see a little more of that, as I showed you before, throughout the night. It's not going to get colder tonight. That's the key. We'll get into the uh, radar and where we have some precipitation and where we're going to get more rain tonight and who could see additional ice accumulations in just a moment. But I really want to show you what a lot of people went through today. Let's start with this. OK, a lot of viewers sent in some pictures and videos, and this isn't just a dog playing fetch. Look off to the upper right on your screen. Crack, 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 boom. And that's not the first big limb you can see from that tree that went down. And last night, Skywatcher on our KSAC Connect posted this. It's a time lapse of 
the freezing rain weighing down his trees. So that was very interesting to see. And of course, uh, I'm gonna go through some of these quickly. Timberwood Park, Rick Martinez, see that there. This is in San Antonio. This is the one I showed you before. This one, jaw dropping. That's a very big and pretty well established oak tree up in Timberwood Park. And I think a lot of this just kept falling throughout the day from the prolonged weight of that ice the additional stress from having it on there for so long. And there was some beauty out there as well, but unfortunately we had some issues. This was along uh, Ralph Fair Road, down power line, fire crews out there taking care of it. But that's the issue with this kind of icing. And most of this was along and north of 1604. Large tree branches falling all day, and some trees have completely fallen over. Looks like a tornado went through our backyard, that being Timberwood Park. This up in Timberwood Park as well, or this is Bulverde rather. And look at how thick that ice is there on that hoop. And another NG here with this nice shot, a little beauty shot of a little peach, a little frozen peach tree. It kind of looks like one of those glass paperweights, you know, that you can get for the office. Anyway, a little bit of bright brightness in your day there with some of those nice shots too. Uh, bridges and overpasses in San Antonio, just fine. OK, just fine. We're going to be a OK the rest of the night. Parts of the hill country could see some additional icing overnight tonight. And I think there's some of it ongoing in some parts of the hill country. I'll break that down for you exactly where drying. This is all done by 10 a.m. tomorrow. We're going to put it behind us by 10 a.m. tomorrow. Here's a look at some of the rain, which is a little bit of freezing rain in Kerr County, Northern Rial County and Northern Edwards County. I expect more of this to develop throughout the night, but the only areas I'm really concerned about it Extreme northern Comal County. We're talking Fisher area up into Blanco County, northern Kendall County. So about comfort right on the cutoff there over toward Kerrville, Kerr County, and especially Gillespie County and points northward. Elevated surfaces could see up to another two tenths of an inch of rain, but I think it's mostly going to be, or ice I should say, but it's mostly going to be less than that. Our freezing line is going to be going northward and this Computer model even shows that. Notice the green it's drawing in here up into the hill country, Kendall County, Comal County overnight tonight. The only thing is it's not going to take a lot more ice to cause more of those limbs to drop down and then it's all over with by 10 a.m. tomorrow. But again, it should be getting better for most of us overnight. You could still have some of those weighted down limbs drop because of that prolonged stress on them because they're not going to thaw very quickly. 36 at 7 a.m. 47 by 4 p.m. tomorrow, a little bit of sunshine finally in the afternoon and then nothing but vitamin D and sunshine Friday through the weekend and we're warming up. Look at Sunday back to 73. Like, yes. the, Be like the Beatles said, here comes the sun. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we're all ready for it. OK, now. Things aren't looking so sunny for the Spurs. Two players hurt. Yeah, they lost the game to the Kings and they also lost Jeremy Sohan and Trey Jones in the first quarter coming up. We'll tell you what happened to those two young players who are combining for 23 points a game. And we have some new details as to why the Cowboys let Kellen Moore go. And it sounds like a little bit of a power struggle with Mike McCarthy coming up. You gonna give us a new hair design for that game? Oh yeah, for sure. I'm I'm still not sure what it's gonna be, but we'll find out. Can't wait to see Jeremy's All-Star Weekend hair on game day. Spurs hosting the Kings tonight, looking to snap a six-game slide. First quarter, Jeremy Sohan with the ball, and out of the blue, he just grabs his lower back. He was subbed out for Josh Richardson. He went to the locker room, and he did not return. Now, a bit later, Trey Jones, not pictured, hurt his left foot, and he did not return after leaving the game. Closing second, Stanley Johnson and Yaka Pirtle for a layup, and the Spurs led 31-30 after one. Second quarter, Kings get some breathing room. Darren Fox steals the ball, and then he goes slam dunk at the other end, and moments later, Fox steals it again and plays alley-oop slam with Malik Monk. It's 49-37 Kings, and they led 61-54 at halftime. Third quarter, closing seconds. Fox hits a 15-footer at the buzzer, and the Kings led 89-84 after going up by as many as 12. 
Fourth frame, Spurs still fighting. Doug McDermott attacking the rim for a bucket, and SA is down 89-88. But the Kings would hold strong, getting 34 from Demona Sabonis, 31 from Fox, and 22 from Monk. Spurs rookie Malachi Branham scored a career-high 22, but the Spurs dropped their seventh straight game, 119 to 109. You know, I was the next guy up, and I was just trying to do whatever I can. Um, so, you know, that's got to have a mentality. Um, like you said, two starters went out. Um, Roby, when he came in, hit some big shots. Um, so, yeah, next guy up. He's playing well. He's getting more and more aggressive and doing well at both ends of the floor. So his progress is great. Spurs will host the Sixers Friday night at 7. Now we'll give you an update on Sohan and Jones once we find out. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy will call the offensive plays next season per team owner and general manager Jerry Jones. Speaking with the media today from the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, Jerry said it's just the logical choice and that McCarthy will run a version of the West Coast offense he used from 2006 to 2018 with the Packers. It'll be the first scheme change for QB1 Dak Prescott. Now, Sunday night we learned that the boys and their former OC Kellen Moore mutually agreed to part ways. Today, Stephen Jones told us why. Mike really felt like it was in our best interest to keep Kellen when he first got here. I think he's done an incredible job for us, and I think he's been great for Dak. But the more he's, you know, been around Kellen, and as much as he respects him, there's still a part of it that doesn't totally jive, if you will, with what he wants out of the offense. Cowboys receiver Michael Gallup underwent arthroscopic surgeries on his right knee and right ankle on Tuesday per multiple reports. He's expected to be good to go for the start of the team's offseason program in April. D'Amico Ryan says he can't wait to get to work in Houston. Last night, the Texans officially named him as the team's sixth head coach in franchise history, ending their three-week search. He's the Texans' fourth field boss in four seasons and says he has what it takes to turn this team around. His former Texans teammate Wade Smith was asked why is D'Amico the right fit? He's the right guy because he's he's the ultimate leader. Like since he since he came into the league as a player, um, he was looked at as the captain in the heart of the defense as a rookie. Gets traded away, goes to Philadelphia. I end up joining him there in Philadelphia a couple years later. Yeah, and it's the same thing. Everybody in Philadelphia loves him. Everybody um, buys into to to what he is and who he is as a person. Um, and then he's translated that to what he was able to do in his leadership uh, skills and ability as a player as a coach. The Texans will introduce Ryan's tomorrow at 4 p.m. Spurs' Jeremy Sohan talks rising stars after the break. Welcome back, everybody. Yesterday, we learned that Jeremy Sohan was selected to the 2023 Rising Stars roster as part of NBA All-Star Weekend in Salt Lake City. Later on this month, the young man with the colorful hair definitely has game. Tonight, we asked him who he's looking forward to seeing at the Rising Stars contest. I think it's just going to be cool to, you know, see the rookies again. Um, you know, before we were all in the NBA world together, whether that was the combine or the draft, um, We've been, you know, together a bunch of times before the season. So I think just, you know, reuniting with them and just, you know, having a little, you know, talk, chit chat, um, talking about how their season are going, you know, their expectations and, you know, just learning from them too. Jeremy's on pace to become the fourth rookie to average at least 10 points, four rebounds and two assists in his first San Antonio season, joining Tim Duncan, David Robinson and Willie Anderson. The Spurs definitely have something special in that young man. That's pretty elite group, right? Isn't there. it really? I mean, come on, that's great. Yeah. All right, thanks, Larry. We'll be right back after this. All right, the cold weather brought snow to Madison Heights, Michigan. <laughs> One woman sculpted these sharks out of the snow in her front yard. She says the snow sharks took about three days to complete. Pretty good. Yeah, some might call this display jaw dropping. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, hey, Here we or go. Jaws dropping, maybe. Hey, some good news. Temperatures holding steady and even rising a few degrees overnight. This is so important. I'm going to share it again. Notice how our temperatures jump up early in the morning to about 33 in the hill country. It's something. It's a help. And then we get into the 40s tomorrow afternoon. Stay warm. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.